What's up Legacy Kids? We're so glad that you are with us here today for our service. We're continuing on in our series on Noah and it's gonna be an exciting lesson today. Again, we're so glad that you're with us. Make sure if you haven't already to like and share this post so that all of your friends can see what is happening in Legacy Kids. We're so excited that you're with us. Let's jump right into today's service. Good evening, folks. Rusty Nimrod here again with a breaking weather news bulletin. Well, today is the day, and it looks like I am right and Noah is wrong because we still have sunny skies and not a cloud in the sky. No rain, as I predicted. No flood, as I predicted. Nothing but happy-go-lucky, whoopie-doopy sunshine. <laughs> as a matter of fact, oh, hold on. Hold on, I I'm getting it. Oh, oh, it looks like we have some breaking news from our field correspondent, Cindy Prescott. What's going on there, Cindy? Thank you, Rusty. As you can see, it is raining. And not just a little bit, mind you, it's pouring rain. I'm up here in this tree because the water level is already three feet above the ground. This is a flood of monumental proportions. Now, wait a minute, Cindy. I forecasted sunny skies. Are you sure this is rain? I don't know, Rusty. What do you think? Of course it's rain. It's not just rain, it's a flood. Face it, Jack. You were wrong and Noah was right. I just hope he wasn't right about this being the one that's gonna destroy the whole world. Because if he is, we're in really big. Hey kids, it's Noah and I'm in the ark. Guess you finally figured that out, huh? It happened just the way God said it would. It started raining and it kept raining. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Finally stopped after the whole earth was flooded. Everything on the earth died. It was so sad. I wish that all had lived for God like they should have, but they chose evil over God. It makes me sad in my heart and I know it does in God's heart too. Me and my family were safe in the ark. We chose to trust the Lord, obey His commands, and He came through for us. He protected us. The storm is over and we're safe here in this ark. I don't know how long we're gonna have to be here, but we will be here until God says it's time to leave and then we'll get out. Well, I know you're gonna learn what happened to me and my family as we go through our little adventure on the ark. This is Noah reminding you Put your trust in God, and He will make sure that you survive the storm. What's up, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Ah, oh, yeah, what's going on, everybody? It's me, the SKI to the double TLES. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about surviving life's storms. So every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. Through the rain and through the storm, God will keep me safe and warm. Life is full of problems and storms. Oh man, it's raining cats and dogs. Or is it hamsters and gerbils? I can't tell! You never know when things can go bad. But if you trust God, he will keep you safe and warm. Oh yeah. God will protect you and keep you safe from every problem this world throws at you. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you, What's up? You tell them. Through the rain and through the storm, God will keep me safe and warm. And that is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor and I'm living for my savior. Skittles out, baby. Wickedy, 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 what's up? <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome to our continuation of Noah and his family. It's time for another Bible lesson. It's found in Genesis chapter 8. Now we pick up our story with Noah and his family on the massive boat called the Ark. That's right, they had built the Ark. They're on top of the floodwaters with all of those animals. It had been 40 days and 40 nights. Man, can you imagine being stuck on a boat for 40 days and 40 nights with not only your family, but all of those stinky animals? I bet it didn't smell too good. But anyways, after 40 days and 40 nights, God caused the big boat to fall atop Mount Ararat. That's where it rested. Actually not too far away from where they started in the first place. But when Noah looked out over the land, he realized it wasn't completely dry yet. So guess how many more days they had to wait in the boat? 50, that's right. 50 more days stuck with your family and all those stinky animals. But the awesome thing is this. After the 50 days were over, they walked outside onto dry land. God had kept them safe through all of it, including the storms. So the first thing they did to honor God was to build an altar of worship right next to the massive boat called the Ark. They worshiped God and thanked Him for bringing them through all the storms of life. It was pretty awesome. But what happened next was even more amazing. God caused a huge rainbow to appear in the sky. And he said this to Noah, this is my promise to you, that every single time it rains, I will look at that and remember my promise not to flood the earth again. Wow, how awesome is that? God was making a promise to Noah and to us. Now, you're gonna learn in your lesson today how after the storms of life and the trials of many kinds, to always remember to worship and honor God. Wicked, 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 what's up? It's getting dark. This is the big one. And I'm better now. Hello, boys and girls. Hi. Um, it's the old pal Boo Boo here today to teach you another power verse. For two weeks in a row, I've been to water themed birthday parties. This week, I went to my nephew Ezra's birthday party. And they said, you know what, Boo Boo? It's okay. We're going to be in a park. There's a lake. You can just sit by the lake and everything's fine. Well, you know what they did on the lake? Canoes! Canoes! Have you seen a canoe? The way it's shaped, it's like you're just sitting in a coffin ready to go. I can't stand it. Oh, I just, I cannot stand it with the, with the bobbing and the swinging and the swaying. You got the paddle that makes your arms burn oh, in, the, in the sun, makes you red like a lobster. I can't stand it. But you know what I can stand? Excuse me. Oh. I can stand the power voice. I can stand that. Let's do that together, okay? Today's power voice says, Oh Lord, you are a refuge from the storm. Isaiah 25, 4. That's a good power voice. It's a good one. It, it really is. You gotta admit it. It's a good one. Another good thing is for the boys to stand up and say the power voice with me, Boo Boo, on the count of three. Stand up, boys. Stand up. You're acting like the dead out there. Come on. Stand up. Stand up. There we go. There we go. You, you got something on your shirt. Get, take care of that. Okay, you're good. All right. Say the power voice with me, boys, on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, it's still on your shirt. Do something about it. It's making me sick. Okay, good. Three, oh Lord, you are a refuge from the storm. Isaiah 25, four. Good job, boys, good job. Not great, but good. Sit down, sit down, okay. Goyles, Goyles is your toy. All right, come on. Stand up, stand up, say the power voice with me, boo-boo, on the count of three. I know you can do a better job than the boys. I mean, come on. Here we go. One, two, three. 
O oh Lord, you are a refuge from the storm. Isaiah 25, 4. Pretty good, pretty good. You can sit down. You can sit. I said you did a good job. What more do you want? A cookie? Come on, sit down. We got to get go going with this. Okay, boys and girls, today's Power Voice is all about celebration. Okay, because let me tell you something. The storms of life, they're not going to last forever. Okay, I thought I was going to be in that canoe for days, for weeks, for months, for an eternity. But I was only in there for like 15 minutes. And when I finally got out, I did a little victory dance. You want to see Boo Boo's victory dance? Here we go. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Here we go. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. I can't do that too much. Otherwise, I start getting nauseous. Anyway, boys and girls, here's the thing. When the storms of life are over, you got to remember God's promises. It's God that gets you through the storm. Nobody else. So all the glory goes to him. So boys and girls, to help you remember that, I need everybody, the boys and the girls, stand up, stand up, say the power voice with me, boo boo, on the count of three. Here we go, everybody. One, two, you ready? Okay, good. Three, oh Lord, you are a refuge from the storm. Isaiah 25, four. You did better this time. You really did. Good job, boys and girls. Sit down, sit down. Well, boys and girls, I gotta tell you something. I'm feeling pretty sick, so I'm gonna go take a nice bath. But I'll tell you something. I've been on the water so much the past few weeks that being in a small receptacle full of water just makes me feel kind of sick. So I think I'm just gonna go take a nap in the tub. Yeah, that sounds really good. Um, I'll see you later, boys and girls. My name's Boo Boo, and um, and oh dear. Here comes the big one. Oh. I better go. Okay. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. Wicked, wicked, wicked. What's up? <laughs>Today we begin our lesson talking about Noah and how the flood had finally ended. He and his family had been on the ark for 40 days and 40 nights, but they weren't off yet. You see, they went out and saw that the, the surface of the ground was dry, but the ground was not completely dry, so they waited even longer. They ended up even waiting a year longer than the flood because they were waiting for God to tell them it was time to get off. Can you imagine what you would do after that long being on the ark, what you would do the first time you stepped foot on ground? I can remember my long flights overseas that I was just so ecstatic after a 13, 14 hour flight, just so happy to finally be on the ground. So I can only imagine what Noah and his family were thinking after 40 days, 40 nights, and a year of waiting to be back on the earth. I figured they would be running and celebrating and laying on the ground, feeling the earth beneath their feet. But what they did was not something that was expected. What they did was they built an altar. They built an altar, that's right. That's exactly what you and I should do when we go through the storms of life. You see, when God brings us through the storms of life, the very first thing we should do is worship. The first thing we must do when God brings us through a storm is worship. Why should we worship? Because God is the one who brought us through life's storms. It's easy for us to get into a place where we think we did this all on our own. I'm sure it could have been easy for Noah thinking he built that boat and he got all the animals there and he survived the storm. But we know that's not true. God protected his family and helped him to build that ark. So the very first thing was he worshiped God and thanked him by building that altar of worship. And in those moments, God began to tell him how he would bless him and his family and how he would be the ruler of all of the animals and he would pour out his blessings over Noah and his family. How awesome is that? God was telling him that he would be blessed because of his obedience and because he was giving recognition to God who brought him through that storm. 
So the very first thing we should do when we survive life's storms is worship God because He's the one who helped us get through those storms. And then the second thing is we can celebrate God's blessings. God can only bless those that are obedient to Him. What if Noah wouldn't have been obedient to God's commands? If he wouldn't have built the ark like he was told to do, he wouldn't have been able to survive the storm that God had sent. It's the same for you and I. If God asks us to do something, we must obey because he knows what is best for us. I find it, I, one of my favorite parts of the story is after the storm and after they had worshiped. You remember what happened? They saw something in the sky. It was a very big rainbow in the sky. God was reminding them of his promise to never flood the earth again. So after, after the storms of life, we must choose to worship, bring recognition, remind ourselves that God is the reason we are still here. God is the reason we survived life storms. The second thing is we get to celebrate. God has blessed us in a mighty way and that deserves a celebration like no other. And then the third thing that we get to do after surviving life storms is to remember God's promise. So after Noah and his family had built this altar of worship, God put this massive rainbow in the sky to give them the promise that he would never destroy the earth again by flood. That's so incredible because God's promises are true. You'd never have to doubt them. If God promises you something, he will always come through. When we worship God and give Him the recognition that He deserves by bringing us through life's storms, then we get to celebrate. We get to celebrate that God has brought favor upon us. He has blessed our lives. And then we get to be reminded of God's promises that He can do it again just like He did then. And every time you see a rainbow in the sky, that is a reminder of God's promise that He will never destroy the earth again but it's also a reminder of all of the other things in the Bible, that He will never leave you, He will never forsake you. You are never alone in life's storms. So after the storms of life, whatever it is you're going through, whether it's a tough time at home, or your parents are splitting up, or you're not feeling good, a family member is sick or in the hospital, whatever the storm is, remember, God is always there with you. And when you get to the other side of the storm and the storm is over, remember to worship God. We can't do it on our own. So we have to remember to worship Him, celebrate His blessings, and remember His promises. We're gonna enter in into a time of worship in just a few seconds, but I wanna remind you that we must worship God and bring recognition to all of the things He's done in our lives because without Him, we wouldn't be where we are at. So it's so important to worship God, to give Him thanks for the many blessings we have in our lives and celebrate that God is always with you and He will never leave you and never forsake you. So let's worship together right now. God who never fails will not fail me now. He won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. I will bless your name. Oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh yes, I will. I count on one thing, the same God who never fails, will not fail me 
God, I thank you for everyone who is watching with us today. I pray blessings over them and that you would be with them throughout their week. I thank you that your promises are still true today, that you are never going to leave us, you will never forsake us, and no matter what's going on in life, the storms of life, you are always there with us to help us get through those moments. God, I pray that as we come out of the storms of life, we would remember to worship you, to give thanks for all the things you have done. And we ask these things in your mighty name. Amen. Rewind! Wow!